Hey, BZB TV fans. My name is Matt, and uh, the San Antonio little office, which is really just my my office. But uh, you know, we've also got uh, Joel over there at the BZB TV studio there in Sacramento, California. We have quite an uncharacteristic day here in San Antonio. It is very overcast, a little breezy, and definitely cold. So you know, when you think of Texas, you're not you're not thinking about that. But uh, how's it going <laughs> over there for you guys in Sac? Uh, it's going all right. I think today we'll actually we'll get actually some rain today. Uh, it was sunny. It's been sunny uh, over the weekend. Um, it, we did have a storm uh, like two, uh, like uh, beginning of the month, uh, high winds and flood warnings. But other than that, it's uh, it's getting kind of sunny. Uh, a little rain today, though. So I uh, got to be careful on my drive. Got a two hour drive ahead of me later. Uh, but uh, you know why? I think I have a, um, a theory why all this weird stuff's happening today or at least in in texas um i think because today is the february the 29th uh which is <laughs> a, a little odd to see right uh <laughs> a little bit of a leap here yeah oh once every four years i suppose <laughs> yeah well you know we've, we've talked about where, what texas is doing we've talked a little bit about what california is doing but we have another guest today who's uh, actually going to be from another portion of the uh, the United States. So let me go ahead and give him a little bit of an introduction today. We are really, really pleased to have Monte Weaver on. Uh, if you don't know who Monte is, he is a content creator, a live streamer and tech consultant. He's really kind of, uh, a, he's a he's a fantastic content creator. He's, he's a little bit uh, focused towards house of worship as far as I'm aware, but enough about me talking about him because we have the, the man himself. So we'll go ahead and get him in here and let him talk about what he does. What's going on, fellas? I appreciate you guys for having me here. Yeah, I am on the East Coast. It's a little chilly here today. Uh, had a nice rainfall yesterday, so that, that was good. But yeah, um, my name is Monty Weaver, content creator. Um, I love PTZ cameras. Um, <laughs> being in the houses of worship with smaller ministries, PTZ cameras are essential for us because we can look like we have like eight people, but it could be one person. <laughs> and so I uh, work a lot with house of worships, do some sporting events on the side and do some conferences on the side as well. So when it comes to gizmos and gadgets, it's just kind of my thing. So loving being here with you guys already. So uh, I'm excited for today and everything we got in store. Yeah, I, I know all about that house of worship, you know, need, needing um, more hands than you actually have available. Absolutely. Uh, I, for a little bit, um, I, I know Joel knows this, but for a little bit, I was doing videography for a, uh, a church. So I was running the live streams on Sundays, and it was definitely a lot of utilization of PTZ cameras. They are very, very helpful in that environment because you can have all your presets done. You just go ahead and run it, and it uh, it makes life a little bit easier. Yeah. Now, uh, like, uh, you know, with you two, you guys both had mentioned, uh, you know, you guys do house of worship, uh, you volunteered and help. Um, would you say the percentage is, uh, I know most of them are, well, all of them are volunteers, uh, but then like on the tech savvy side, or at least, you know, a little knowledgeable on, on this stuff, would you say the, like most of the people that you, you talk to, more than half or less than half, are they aware like knowledgeable of what they need what's needed how to like basic hookups or are you guys going into it kind of like a, a, like it's a, like a lesson 101 you know and you have to it very much start from the beginning it, it very much depends it, it can vary from place to place um, usually you know you'll have at least one guy on staff that you know has a lot of knowledge because they're either the technical director or they have an actual director or videographer um, so they'll know what they're doing, but as far as keying in everybody else, when it's like, um, you know, pastors or whatnot, when you're talking about the budget, what you need for the next year, that's all on you as, as a technical director or, um, uh, a videographer, or when you're talking about, um, volunteers, sometimes it's hit, hit or miss volunteers. If you have people that are going to run the camera or help you run the live stream, it's going to be, um, Oftentimes you're going to have to train them. Sometimes you get surprised and they know a little bit, but you're still probably going to have to train them a little bit. I don't know if it's been any different for you, Monte. Yeah. Yeah. I would say pretty similar where I've, I've noticed that a lot of the volunteers are maybe either audio heavy focused or just mm -hmm. video heavy focused or maybe just live stream focused. And they, they don't have the full gamut of 
everything that it takes to pull that off. Um, and the workflow I find is very challenging for most of them too, because they just don't know like to you, to what you're saying about what goes to what and how things can just work more seamlessly. So, um, and, and I think some of the equipment is new to them. The concepts are there, but like some of the switchers are like, Oh, I can plug in four cameras and I don't have to connect everything physically to the computer. So some of the newer equipment, um, you know, bringing them up to speed on that. But I just, I like, I like how BZB Gears has equipment that's just like very easy to use. And so I've noticed that the, the church that I'm at right now, teaching volunteers how to live stream has become easy just because it's like, hey, just like you said, Matt, just hit the preset and, and hit this button. Yeah. And then we could go along with it. So definitely keeping it simple for them is something that I see works too. Yeah, I, I think I was telling Joel this when we were in uh, ISE. Um, this this last month, but I think I remember saying something about us having a, a binder about that thick, um, <laughs> and it was step by step process. Hey, if I'm not here, or if our technical director oh. is not here, this is the step by step everything you need to know of like how to get the stream running when you when you get there early. So yeah, yeah, that, that that's kind of the the level that you have to break it down to. Sometimes I mean it, it can be even worse than that because I know um, some of the churches that I've interacted with here, uh, they're. The, the, the people that they have running the live streams or whatnot, they're not uh, brought in specifically for that. They're just volunteers and they had to figure it out themselves. So mm -hmm. yep. um, it, it's definitely a, a big range of, of what you're getting. Speaking of um, our, our switchers though, uh, you know, we, we've talked about our, our producer flow quite a bit. And uh, I think we have a, a special cam set up today. Uh, I don't know if he wants to go to it. And uh, we, we've got a little bit of an announcement that uh, we wanted to make regarding a video. Hey there, Flo. <laughs> uh, oh, unfortunately, we couldn't get his mic working. He, he was trying, but uh, you know he's got the fancy glasses on right now. So, uh, Joel, do you want to take it away on on what's going on back there? Yeah, no, he's just uh, always Mr. DJ right here. He's always uh, hard at work, um, always trying to get him in front of the camera. He's always behind the camera. So I said, hey, how about we turn around the camera and get this guy on, uh, give him some airtime. So uh, no, he's just uh, kind of showing uh, showing the whole setup that he that we got going on here. Uh, we're using all of our equipment to produce this live stream right now. Um, it is uh, right now he's holding the Quad Fusion Junior, our video production switcher, uh, 1080p. Uh, we have our Commander Junior uh, controller, our, our smaller version of the Commander and Commander Pro. Um, and right now we are being shot on our 1080p. Um, Adamo Jr. Uh, camera. Uh, oh, there you go. There you see it. Um, and we actually have a, a video coming out uh, soon, or it might be up right now, actually up right now. If you guys want to check it out, uh, just a quick uh, overall overview of how uh, these three are incorporated together and how to make a, how to set up live stream and uh, utilize its AI auto tracking uh, features. So um, yeah, so that is our producer slash director. Uh, the man behind the curtain, uh, Mr. Oz, uh, that's Florante. But uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, that was fun. Uh, it's always good to try to get him uh, <laughs> uh, on, on screen. But yeah, um, so, uh, I was just going to say thanks for, for coming on the show a little bit there, Flo. I know it didn't go out up to the way that we wanted it to with the, with the microphone. But Joel, I think there was one more thing. Uh, I think Flo mentioned that we had a video that's going to be releasing sometime today, right? Um, yeah, no, I think this, so the video is, is yeah, is, it is up right now. Uh, we we will have, uh, or it's not up right now, but we are, it's in the editing process. Uh, we'll have that uh, video as well as a series of other videos on focusing on the uh, all three units, but uh, especially Adamo Jr. Uh, we'd like to highlight that. That one just was just awarded at uh, ISE that we went to. Um, oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. That's the VG Nutrix, our medical grade camera. Uh, this camera was awarded at uh, IBC um, earlier, uh, uh, last year, late last year. So very proud of that. So yeah, just check out our, our YouTube channel, BZB TV, uh, when you get a chance after this uh, live stream, uh, obviously. Uh, but uh, yeah, a lot of great content, new content coming up for you guys. All right. Well, that's enough about us. Uh, you know, we, we, uh, we like to talk about ourselves sometimes, but uh, we've got Monte on the show. So we should definitely kind of pick his brain a little bit. But Monte, I know you said you've uh, kind of been in the AV space for about uh, 25 years, right? Yeah. Yeah. So how did you get your start? 
Yeah, I, I started in the church. Um, uh, I was the kid that did not want to do the choir. I was not singing. I was not going to be in a stage play, nothing. So I don't know if you guys remember, but back in the day, you had those transparent lyrics with the uh, overhead projector, and we would <laughs> yeah, slide yeah. back and forth to project on the screen. And then we had our uh, recorded messages on tape, and then it kind of was just graduating up the different uh technologies that uh the world was you know taken advantage of uh even produced some of our ministry uh tv services so edited those after service on vhs we had to cut it and run it through the editor software all oh, before man. live was a thing so i would spend this was in high school i would be doing that after church on sundays and then uh the the gentleman that was teaching me how to do this stuff the process took until almost two in the morning and so he oh, would wow. finish it up in the mornings and then uh I would be going to school on a Monday. So that was kind of my weekends. And so I've just been uh, always the one that just kept graduating the different technologies. And then I migrated into the professional world where I did VTC. So I was doing video teleconferencing and then actually understanding the protocols, the backbone of how video and audio work. So, you know, then I was able to really have this full understanding of just AV in general. So, yeah, that's how it started. So I tell anyone that's, you know, volunteering at a at a, a house of worship is like you're you're doing more than just volunteering for that house of worship. You're actually learning a skill set that you could take mm -hmm. out in the world too, because there's so many different places and people that need a camera and a microphone and somebody to be able to operate them. Yeah, it, it definitely seems like uh, I definitely I had a few volunteers that um, you know they'd show up, they they do their their camera work, and then they'd kind of like bolt out as soon as it was over, but. Um, there's definitely a lot more that you can learn with it. And yeah. so did you just go straight from kind of volunteering, going up the ladder and then straight into the professional world? Like, did you not have any, um, you didn't go to like a trade school or anything? Yeah, I ended up going to a trade school. So it was, it was uh, senior year high school, about halfway through, didn't take SATs. Like, what are you going to do, Monty? Like, I was a good student, had good grades, just had no idea what I really was going to do. Um, and end up going to, uh, I think, the now debunked ITT Technical Institute for two years and uh, got my uh, associate's degree in computer networking. So that's the route I thought I was going to go down mm -hmm. because when you looked at all the jobs, it was the highest paying one. So that's the one I chose. <laughs> uh, <Yeah. laughs> After I got into the networking side of it, uh, my supervisor, he said, hey, you know, part of what we do on the networking is, is we have the VTC teleconferences and we need somebody to be, you know, know that. So uh, I ended up going and doing that. There was a company that got bought out by Cisco called Tanberg for anybody that remembers that. So I have a few certifications in Tanberg and uh, yeah, so did trade school definitely did help. Didn't go for audio and video parts of right. it. Um, yeah, it, it the networking definitely helped me understand because you know the compute the I'm using the Adamo 4K right now and I have it on my internal network. So understanding networking in general definitely does help. Yeah, and um, you know I, I think that's one thing that in the audio video world that a lot of people kind of glance over at least in terms of like content creation and everything is like you know I I got a, a formal education in it which was great, but um, a, a lot of times it's not necessarily uh, there, there's the saying, show me what you can do. Don't tell me what you can do, right? So um, tying that back into, into volunteering in the church, um, utilizing that to develop your skill set and learn new skills, new things that you can add into the toolbox of, hey, you know what? Um, let me pick this guy's brain. There's some really cool things that I, I've thought about doing. And then going out and doing it yourself, applying yourself, you know, that, that definitely um, gets you a lot further than if you just show up on Sunday, you, you operate the camera and then you go home. Right. So, right. Joel, do you have any questions? You're, you're Actually, looking a little yeah. bit physical um, there. Um, no, I, I wanted to talk, uh, ask about uh, Monte. What do you, uh, the whole live streaming, uh, you know, houses of worship live streaming. Uh, I know when the, uh, like before and after COVID, um, mm -hmm. with you know my church, um, uh, I haven't gone in a while. But, the, <laughs> but I, uh, when <laughs> when I used to go to every Sunday, 
um, even back, uh, even before COVID, right? Like, uh, at least with our church, uh, I didn't notice any PTZ cameras. I don't think live streaming was a big thing for them. Uh, mm -hmm. But I know churches, they did, uh, you know, live stream uh, their, their services uh, prior to, to, to co you know, the, the lockdown. Uh, yeah. But then, you know, after, during, uh, I know it, it just exploded because, I mean, that was really the only means of, of uh, carrying on services. Uh, but not, you know, I just video conferencing as a whole, right? Like my kids, they, they were going to school, remote learning for that whole year, um, you know, businesses conducting meetings and whatnot. But for churches, um, did you was there, was there a, a big explosion? Um, do you think that you know the, the lockdown kind of forced everyone, and it's uh, been prevailing? Uh, you know, people are carrying on afterwards. Uh, you know, before prior to to before, uh, like, do you think there was a lot of people? Um, you know, how how was the live streaming basically uh, before and after? Um, how did people view it? How did you view it? How did churches view it? Yeah, I, I, before 2020, um, yeah, to your point, I, I don't think PTZ cameras were a big thing in the churches because the, the ones that were recording their services or going live, they had the capacity, physical hands to have someone behind a camera and be able to do it. And I think that's kind of where they were because they weren't really privy to, hey, there's these other types of cameras out here on the market that help you do this better. And I think the smaller churches and ministries just thought it was too costly to be able to even live stream. So when 2020 happened and they were forced to live stream, the smaller ministries started bringing out the cell phones and the iPads as the way to do it not realizing, hey, there's this technology with these PTZ cameras that allows you to do this where if you're going to do it, like, let's do it a little bit better than a tripod with the cell phone in the middle of the aisle. Yeah, we can see it, but, you know, long term, that's not going to be an option for you. Yeah. And then as we started to come out of, you know, being in our houses every day, you know, people got accustomed to watching live streams and if you shut it down, then they're like, hey, what's going on? Or like to to your point, hey, if I haven't been back in a while, but I'm willing to watch online, I don't really want to watch the cell phone version of your service. I want to watch like I'm watching TV so I can actually feel like I'm more involved. And so it was funny because and I tell the story all the time when I uploaded the video, how to live stream for churches for free in March, 2020, it was kind of out of frustration because I was trying to convince churches and like, Hey, do you guys not see these PTZ cameras and like how effective they can be for your church? And so I released it the week before they made the announcement. Hey, everybody is staying home. And so that's why that video just kind of took off. And I started getting all these requests for, hey, which camera is the best? And how do we do this? And can you come and help? And, you know, some of the other people that I know that are in this space, they, they started migrating to PTZs as well. So I definitely have seen the explosion of these types of cameras being used because there's like, I have a joystick here and it just moves around. And like, to, to what I said earlier, you know, just having, you know, two or one of these, like you can follow someone all around the building and you can visually as a as a viewer stay connected because it's not a cell phone. And, you know, somebody walks off screen, and you have no idea what's happening. So and, and I think that's important for people that are that are producing the live streams is, hey, there's an audience here and they they actually want to watch this. They're tuned in for a reason. Yeah, and, and one of the best things about PTZ cameras, sorry sorry to cut you off there, Joel, but mm -hmm. um, they can be so versatile. Um, you know, when I, when I started working for the church uh, back in, in California, they had a PTZ camera installed, but they almost never used it. And mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we used Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras for, for most of the live stream, but I started incorporating the PTZ camera. Um, actually, it, it was funny because when I first went there for the interview, um, I, I stayed for one of the services just to watch the live stream and all that stuff. And they're like, yeah, if you feel like there's something that uh, you can do, go go ahead and, and do it if you want to. And so I'm like, hey, you guys have that PTZ camera. Do you guys have it set up? And they're like, oh, no, kind of, but we don't really use it. So they had like this little mini, I, I don't even remember what it was, but it was a really small like controller and it wasn't the greatest for it. Um, so <laughs> I started just setting up some different presets for some close-ups on uh, worship 
and uh, like close up of the piano when, it, when it's getting played and, and all that stuff. I'm like, they're like, oh, you can do that with that? I'm like, yes, you can. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I think a lot of people just don't necessarily know the capabilities of the cameras. Um, yeah. And I, I don't blame them. You know, a lot of people, when they think video cameras, they think something more like a, a DSLR or like a, a larger box camera or, or something along those lines. Um, because that's, that's traditionally what you what you learn about when you learn about video, but you don't necessarily learn about PTZ cameras. Um, so sorry, sorry to hijack that, Joel. What were you gonna say? No, uh, I mean just uh, kind of on the same thing. Well, to piggyback on what you're saying, yeah, with because PTZ cameras, I mean, they're uh, cameras before were just like the huge cameras, right? So I mean, it's the be the, the beauty is the PTZ, right? Pan tilt and zooming, and it's a uh, small form factor. You can hide it discreetly on the wall. Uh, a lot better than Monte, like Monte uh, uh, mentioned, like uh, than using a phone or an iPad. Uh, I know that's what my dad, uh, my dad still uses his iPad for everything. Even though he has a phone, we just got him a new iPhone, but he's so used to the iPad that he he still will still take photos. So he'll use the iPad uh, <laughs> to search things online. I'm like, Dad, dude, like, <laughs> should reach in your pocket and you got your your answer right there, but. So, um, but yeah, no, so PTZ has been a revelation. Um, I was gonna ask uh, Monte, uh, so with the, with the whole live streaming thing too and the volunteers, um, like auto tracking, uh, you know, like it, 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 we tout it as, yeah, you, like it's, it's great because uh, you don't need a camera operator anymore, right? You set it, forget it, and you can uh, speaker a, t is a teacher or uh, uh, at schools or a priest, uh, um, you know, at church. Uh, do you do you think uh, AI has been is it being utilized more you know, now that the 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 the, uh, the technology and the cameras are, 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 are you know have that feature now a lot have that feature now or are, are they still more comfortable with an operator controlling everything behind the scenes and um, yeah like so how uh, the, at least with the uh, like uh, the churches that you've helped out um do you see ai are they utilizing it a lot or they still like that uh, cameraman uh yeah they, they they've just adopted and accepted ptz so the ai portion of it is still <laughs> a challenge for them yeah. um and i think some of that just has to do with the learning curve of actually understanding it I, i'm big on uh, knowing what I call knowing you're out. So for people that ride motorcycles, one of my, the instructor that taught me, that, gave, that, that uh, went through the class for, he said, always know you're out when you're riding your motorcycle because if a car doesn't see you, know where you can maneuver to. And so I kind of think about the same thing in my, my live streaming workflows. It's if the AI stops working or it, it follows the wrong person all of a sudden, how do you correct that in real time? And yeah. that is a challenge for people to learn. I know for myself here in the studio, I love using it because I live stream on Amazon too. So if I'm on this side of the studio and I have to go walk over on the other side to grab something, you know, I, I have one switcher here, I have one switcher there, but if I can't reach that switcher, uh, I don't want it to kind of take away from the live stream. I'd just rather have the AI turned on and I can just start walking and I can come back to it. And I'm comfortable with using it. So, you know, trying to have the ministries and houses of worship use it, it's still a challenge, especially like during uh, the singing, praise and worship time periods. But once it's a speaker by themselves on stage, I think that's a great time to turn it on because mm. you kind of know that that person is going to be the only one there for a while. And then once they, um, you know, in the in the service maybe turn it back off so i think there's ways to definitely start to ease it into people's workflows they just have to try it you know i'm, I'm big on it hey just try it let's see what happens yeah. you know you're not going to break anything everything can be fixed <laughs> um and uh -huh. yeah. yeah yeah i mean it's with definitely the, like, cool, cool the toolbox yeah i mean ai i because they we've had i mean ai has been around uh, but you know for a while now uh but then you know with the with newer uh, technology like with our cameras we have uh, we always tout ai right ai auto tracking uh we, you know our, we have we had the um, auto tracking cameras before like our earlier models uh those are great uh it tracks uh wonderfully also but then you you still have to kind of go through the settings and set the parameters of where you want the uh, tracking to end start and end uh maybe and uh, other things like that you have to do set up all the parameters but with the view with ai auto tracking is is you just 
you don't have to set anything up. It's just automatically, uh, you know, it, it goes over your, you know, the out, human algorithms and whatever, and it 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 um, will track you like that. So, uh, yeah, hopefully with with when people get more used to it, uh, you know, the PTZ cameras, and then also with the AI auto tracking, since it's a uh, it's a lot better now. Um, yeah, hopefully people grab it, you know, can gravitate towards that. Yeah. Well, kind of speaking about easing people into utilizing some of these new tools like auto tracking and, and whatnot, you know, a lot of it is just knowing the when is the best time to use it, when might not be a good time to use it. How do you kind of communicate that in a house of worship? How would you go about that? Yeah, so I, I really like to play our services in my head before service starts. So I, I kind of know, hey, are we going to do any special things today? Or is there going to be a, the kids, like last week we had our kids come and they sung. So it was a little bit different. So we kind of know, okay, we have to have additional microphones. We have to maybe move the pulpit around a little bit. So knowing your service flow, I think, is really big and, and, and being involved in that. I know for those of us that, you know, we operate our equipment every week. It's a little bit easier versus someone that may step in like once every few weeks. And because it's one thing to be in the audience, it's another thing to be behind in, you know, producing it because you see things totally different. So knowing knowing the environment, I think, is is big. And like I said, you know, if I, if I know there's certain segments, there's only going to be one person. I don't really have to deal with anything other than that one person. I kind of know what I can do to correct it if something does does go wrong. Um, I think about physical manpower, woman power. If I'm the only person that day operating everything, I might stay away from the auto tracking if it's a hindrance to me, or I might gravitate toward it because I am the only person and I know that can do all the heavy lifting and I can kind of focus on something else. So um, I think having a plan, just going into it, having that plan, practice that's always a good thing <laughs> you know just hitting go live private or you know after service just go live to a dummy page i literally created i did a youtube video of me creating a ai church it's just a dummy page so i can test stuff over there to see what works see what doesn't work and then when it's time to go live you know you know nobody's in the chat like what's going on it's, it's like i have a i have a, a situation that i can create and be able to know before I go into it. So I'm not walking into the scenarios blind, but um, yeah, I, I think just having a plan is, is really something to, to do because I think all of us that, you know, use this equipment, we're always like, okay, let me check my internet speed. Let me restart the computer. We kind of know these other things that we need to do, but like some of the newer technology, we also should just go and try that too. So when I jumped on here, uh, I was like, Dag, I haven't used AI over here for a few weeks. Let me just go make sure the button is still there. And I actually was trying something different with the microphone. I actually had the microphone directly in the PTZ camera versus using it through my audio. So I was like, let me mm -hmm. go ahead. And it wasn't working and i was like okay why isn't it working oh i gotta log in let me click enable audio now everything is good so not only with just ai but just with everything just go in every once in a while and have like just your own personal refresher course i think it's helpful yeah absolutely just just playing around with the equipment setting yeah. up some time to, to go like hey you know what i've always kind of wanted to mess around with this let's take uh, an hour and, and see how all this stuff works and yeah um i know i've definitely done that with my <laughs> with my cameras <laughs> Um, it's just kind of a fun thing to do. It also helps you to, um, be a little creative sometimes. Yeah. Like how would this look if I were to change a couple of the settings here, whether that's shutter speed or, um, what, what if I did this at 30 FPS instead of 24 or whatever? Yeah. So, um, I kind of want to shift gears a little bit because you did mention, uh, 2020, the, the start of the pandemic, that's kind of like, when you're like out of frustration, you, you made the video of how to live stream for free. And uh, a week later, that kind of blew up. So that kind of starts me wondering, is that how you really started into the YouTube thing? Was it was more of an outlet for you as, hey, I'm involved in the house of worship. These are some things that I've been seeing pop up. Um, I'm not seeing people address these issues. So maybe I can step into the space and create content to help address these issues. Yeah. So, so prior to 2020, I had actually started live streaming in 2016 and showing people how to do it. So for those that, uh, familiar with OBS, um, it was, you know, popular for the gamers, but live stream, people didn't really know how to use it 
for live streaming yet. So back in the days of Periscope, uh, a buddy of mine uh, was like, hey, can you show me how to do it? Because I was just I just like playing around with the technology. Let me just see what works. And so I was just live streaming on my Facebook account through OBS. And I was doing screen share and all of this stuff when Facebook Live first came out versus just using my phone. I was like, using my phone is boring. I don't want to do that. Let me see what I can do with this technology. And so I had started to do a lot of the educational uh content on facebook and on periscope showing people how to live stream different tools different softwares and all of that 2019 rolls around and i'm like man my content is not like reaching who i should think it should reach like let me try this youtube thing because the same thing i'm talking about over here on these platforms people are talking about on youtube and they have like hundreds of thousands of subscribers millions of views they're getting paid and all that kind of stuff so it was January 2020. I was like, okay, I'm just going to focus on YouTube. So it was kind of one of those things where everything just aligned for the perfect storm. And then YouTube just kind of took off because the same stuff I'm talking about now, I was already talking about then. It's just, um, it's been a lot better, I would say. You know, more reach, more people have seen the content and the videos, uh, more opportunities as a content creator. I didn't know about brand deals and sponsorships when I started YouTube. It, like, I, I just thought that was like a far-fetched thing. And then a couple of months later, I still have the microphone um, a company sent me. They were like, hey, we saw your YouTube videos. You want? Can we send you a microphone for you to talk about? I'm like, oh, okay. Not thinking nothing of it. I didn't know it was a yeah. thing. So, um, yeah, it was kind of just the perfect alignment of everything and just me as a, as a teacher, creator, making that shift to YouTube and then saying, oh, okay, this is probably a better place for me to show up on a regular mm-hmm. basis. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I noticed your, uh, your, your channel – uh for everybody out there hit up uh go to youtube uh monte weaver i, b- I believe is it monte weaver a sh- yep. official or yeah it's just monte weaver right you can search monte weaver and it'll pull me up yep oh okay at monte weaver uh official uh 31k subscribers that's a that's a good amount um i mean with us uh i remember when we first started uh People kept telling us, uh, you know, just work at it, you know, just keep uh, releasing content uh, like regularly. People will start gravitating towards and noticing your channel. Um, They told us like a rule of thumb is like once you get your your uh, first thousand uh, subscribers, uh, then it'll be a little easier and you'll you'll start to see followers start to flow in and. Um, I mean, it was true for us. I mean, because we we only had maybe six, seven hundred at the time. And we needed to. We're trying to build the the the, uh, the channel, but then once we hit that one one thousand mark, um, it just I don't know what it was. It just seemed like uh, more eyeballs were getting uh, on our videos, um, and uh, yeah. So we've we've slowly grown uh, to a, like a, not as as uh, maybe a third of what you have, or uh, not even a third yet, <laughs> maybe a quarter of what you got. But um, yeah, I mean, like, so is it? Um, like any any tips uh, i know i see your your um i i do at least uh, on on uh i used to do the thumbnails so uh like I, i'm a graphic designer uh you know on the side so i, I like doing all that stuff do you work on your own thumbs because i know thumb is kind of like uh the, the the book a, a book cover uh it's kind of like the first thing people see uh i know there's a certain uh, certain uh tips to do you know don't, you know make it kind of uh large images because uh, the thumb is really small, uh, don't have small yeah. text. Um, do you do your own thumbs? Uh, I, do you design your own thumbs? I, outs- I outsource them for the most part. Every oh. once in a while, I'll do them. So like the fake AI one, I think I did I did that one. Um, but yeah, my, my thumbnails are not good. The ones that I do. <laughs> so, so the ones that other people do for me, those are much better. Okay. Yeah, because it's 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 uh, it's tough. I mean, you think oh, it's a thumb. It, it, it's an easy thing, right? But it it's, it's, it's definitely not, not my strong suit. Kinda... <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot that goes into creating a thumb and putting the right pieces and and uh, make you know conveying that message uh, in such a small uh, canvas size, you know, to to your audience to try to get them to click on your uh, on the video. So um, yeah. yeah, no, I mean, you, I, I love the. Uh, the thumbs that you use, uh, I mean, uh, you, you come out with uh, content regularly, too. So, I mean, that's what um, as long as you're, you know, you're out there, it, it, it brings a lot of attention. So, I mean, I, we commend you for uh, the work that you're doing, helping out, you know, church, uh, houses of worship. Um, I know you said that you so you've helped with everyone from churches to like Fortune 500 companies. 
um, uh, I know like smaller churches might need just one camera and one uh, controller, for instance. Uh, but like, what is the, I guess what was the, the the scale like the largest I don't know church setup or company setup that you've had to do like. Uh, was there like 10, 20 cameras you have to help set up and help design? Yeah, so the largest one, it wasn't it wasn't too out there because they already had existing equipment. So they just really wanted to add on. So I think we added two extra cameras. They already had three in place. And then it was a lot of the configuration parts of it. New computer, setting up. Uh, I believe I installed Wirecast for them. So it was a brand new software they weren't familiar with. So teaching them how to how to use that. Um, because that that's kind of the lane I like to be in. The mega churches, I feel like they have the expertise to know how to do it. And in most cases, they have someone that they, they probably know or, hey, th there's this company here that they just Google online and can find them right around the corner or something yeah. like that. So the, the, the smaller ministries that, you know, are the ones that have really found me on YouTube. Hey, this guy obviously showed me how to do this through his example. Here's the stuff he used. Um, and then I get a lot of the comments. Hey, I bought this camera and I can't figure out how to do this. And then. I'd look at the camera they bought. I'm like, okay, that's because that camera is missing RS-232 port or that camera doesn't have an HDMI port. So it's like, yeah, you follow the instructions, but you didn't use the equipment. And not to say, you know, I'm biased towards certain equipment, like the camera I'm using right now or the camera that's over the shoulder. <laughs> but, uh, it, you know, if you don't have the right equipment for what you're trying to accomplish, that's a problem. So, you know, I try to make the video tutorial videos in a way that people understand. I try to call out certain things like you need the HDMI port to do this part of the setup. So the smaller ministries that may invest in one camera, two cameras, kind of where um, I like to help them the most. Um, well, kind of want to you back off of that, Joel, just really quick. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you mentioned you really enjoy talking about um, upgrading the workflow or yeah. um, kind of choosing the right software or hardware in order to be able to meet certain needs. How do you go about that with smaller ministries? Because I know uh, a lot of times budget is a big concern. So how, how's yeah. the best way to, to approach that? Yeah, I, I really try to, I, I, I try to get to two people, the, the, the leader, the pastor, the, 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 the priest, the, the person that is, making the decisions on the flow of the service, not so much the financial decisions, but the flow of the service. They're, they kind of know everything that's going on. And I try to get it the, the tech person. Who is the person that I can go to to say, hey, what computer do you have? Because for me, those are the two people that are gonna play the most important role in the workflow overall. Because if the the, the lead technician person doesn't have the knowledge capacity, then we've got to come with a more simplified approach to what we're going to be using. We might not want to be using, like I'm using Ecamm for live streaming today. We might not want to go with Ecamm because that's also a Mac only software. So, hey, even though I know the software, I, I love the software, we might have to go with a different software just because of what you currently have. Um, mm -hmm. If they currently have equipment that's outdated, I try to encourage them, hey, it's time to like pull that out and get rid of it. And then once you start pulling out old equipment, you might see that it's got old cabling. And so now you're like, oh, now I just opened up a rat's nest. So, you know, trying to figure out what they currently have first is big because we can upgrade. You guys know you can update some of the back. The backbone is so important. <laughs> if the backbone infrastructure is off or it, it's outdated, no matter trying to put all this new equipment on the old backbone, it's just not going to work the way we want it to work. Um, what the, the ministry now that I'm at now, um, they had a whole bunch of adapters. Everything was an adapter to an adapter to an adapter. And I was like, yeah, we got to get rid of these adapters because somewhere in this chain, when you try to troubleshoot, it's going to break. And we don't know which adapter to which adapter to which adapter is, yeah. is causing the issue. So, um, yeah, so it, those two people I think are very important. Um, and then, you know, you, in most ministries, they, they don't have a, a dedicated budget set aside for the audio visual. So I try to encourage them to, hey, we, we need something to work with and then just maximizing what we can, um, you know, in that budget and letting them know 
the the return on the investment like hey if you invest in this equipment it's really going to help you and this is a video i'm actually going to work on so you guys will get a little insight it's how ministries can use youtube to actually bring in more revenue to the ministry because if so people are watching youtube uh church youtube channels can get monetized church mm-hmm. youtube channels can you know accept donations church youtube channels right. can put links in the description and say hey this is the book that of the month that we're reading or hey if you need a new bible click here and go to amazon because amazon allows nonprofits to monetize off their associates program so there there are returns for investing in this equipment and to the point i made earlier you got to make them actually want to watch it so if you have a good quality camera and good microphone you know people are more inclined to watch and watch longer so yeah have it it's all it's always a fun conversation for those that aren't you know they're, they're used to the way they're doing stuff, but like letting them know, like, hey, that one service, if you, you know, you tell everybody to, you know, share, share your service, you know, it could reach a lot of people. And, you know, they're, they're, you can make your money back, you know, through social media and different ways you put it out there. And so it's definitely worth the investment. Right. Would you say less right. people are actually going to um, like church now uh, with the uh, explode, you know, the, more accessibility with uh, live streaming and, and cameras uh, being able to for churches to do it right. Um, maybe uh, I don't know. Like my parents, like <laughs> my parents used to go all the time, and they ever since the uh, pandemic, they uh, yeah, they just uh, I don't know if it's because they don't want to risk getting sick again. Uh, but it, it's been years past and. Uh, so I, I don't know. I haven't really asked them why, but they, um, they were the ones who like when, when I was living at home, right. It was kind of like, uh, you got to go with the family. Uh, when I moved out, it was a little harder for me to, to keep up with that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, now that I, you know, with my own parents, like they were always going, but they, they don't, uh, go anymore. So, I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, do you feel that, <laughs> you know, the live streaming has, uh, has it compromised like the the, the actual uh, you know uh, people that uh, parishioners that that go that actually attend uh, yeah i definitely haven't everyone hasn't come back that used to go but a lot of them still do support by watching so mm-hmm. even though they're yeah. not physically there they're there and watching and still sending in their donations and still supporting where they can and you know volunteering at different events and functions so i don't think the people have left but i think they are just attending in a different way you like that answer yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's how i kind of fall for the blows of some of my uh my leaders it's like they're they're still there when you see yeah. uh 35 people watching online and you have 15 people in the building you like hey you still have a total of 50 people that are a part of that service yeah yeah i mean it is just oh. a, it is a, a different experience though uh, i remember doing um during the lockdown it was the uh, i think it was a easter or a christmas um um, um service and yeah just uh, I mean, you still want to, I still felt like I wanted to be with the crowd, with the people. uh, Oh, there's nothing like being there. Yeah, there's nothing like being there. Trying to recreate the internal environment is, that's that's where I think like the next level of those of us that are like, you know, behind the computer, that's what we're trying to do. But Mm -hmm. like, there's nothing like being in that room because, you know, trying, trying to, we, we can't show you everything, you know, you might hear someone over here crying and just having a good time or this person laughing or it, and, and then after the services are over, that community aspect of it, you're, you're, hey, it's just service over and you go and do something else where the other people get a chance to fellowship and talk and say, hey, let's go grab a bite of food and learn more about each other. Or, hey, what are your kids doing this weekend? Let's get together and do something. Yeah. So I think that uh-huh. part of it is still very important. And the church is kind of that place where, you know, people come together and have community so the live stream you know it it can't fix that element for those people that don't want to be there but yeah to your point you know there's there's sometimes you definitely want to be there and so i think knowing that you have the ability if you need to you know you can watch the live stream i know uh, a few weeks back you know i i had caught COVID again and so it's like okay i I, i'm going i'm sitting here watching my own church's live stream and so (laughs) yeah uh, so yeah well, yeah, I mean, I, I, 
It's, 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 I mean, it is a wonderful tool. I mean, that people like, like you said, who are sick, they're ill, you know, they can't uh, physically go or say they're out of town, uh, the business trip, you know, like when we used to go to uh, like say Las Vegas or Reno uh, with a family trip. Uh, and then it, you know, Sunday uh, we'd go to whatever ch local church was there. Uh, you know, but you know, nowadays you, you still want to go to your, uh, you know, your parish, your, your, your church, you could just, log in go uh you know watch their 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 services on that sunday and still you know be part of the uh, that that community uh your your home community um so it, it's it's yeah like even though it, it is a little difficult i mean but the uh, just to have that access and the ability to 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 catch it uh that's that's the most important thing yeah. well i'm, I'm kind of curious Monte. I, I don't know if you've thought about this but you know, one of the things about watching a, a service on live stream as opposed to being there in person, uh, we kind of talked about this, you know, you're trying to capture that experience. And part of that experience is the fact that you're able to, uh, you feel like you're a part of it. You feel like you can, um, what, what's a good word? You can engage with mm -hmm. what's happening. How do you, do, have you thought about ways to maybe capture that on live stream, like alternate ways, whether that's chat or, or something like that? Yeah, I, I think chat is definitely, uh, it, it goes without saying, like utilize the chat because it is there. And, you know, there's different ways we've tried to utilize the chat, um, like our midweek services. Typically, you, we have a lower uh, amount of people that come to those, but you know, because they're getting off work or, you know, with the family or whatever it might be. But in the chat, they're definitely more active in the chat. And even having whoever is in front of the stage, and this could be for anything you're live streaming, a conference event, whatever, whoever that speaker is, is to actively have people engage in the chat. Let them know, hey, you guys, put it in the chat. What are you guys thinking? Give me some feedback on it and having that in the chat. Now, on the other end, it's like, okay, now, what do you do with that? that that chat because they are communicating back and in certain workflows i've even tried to communicate what's being said in the chat back to the speaker so having a tv that they can see a confidence monitor that they can see and say oh, okay i see you in the chat and they're able to call out hey matt hey joel here, hey dave here linda you know they can call that person out because um you know if you call someone's name in the chat like they, their ears perk up they're, you know they're more engaged again because they heard their name they 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 listen to you saying their comment or asking their question so having the chat and finding creative ways to utilize that chat i think is is pretty cool um incorporating maybe like a zoom or how we have like a three person panel here, you know, incorporating the video aspect of it where people like are engaged in, you know, being able to see other people. So I think there's some other ways that we can do that specifically for the churches and ministries, but utilizing the chat, I think is like one of the must, the things you have to do at, in some capacity. Maybe yeah. it's not during the big service part, but again, those training periods. Hey, let's try to see if we engage with the chat more so than the people in the actual physical room. What does that experience look like? And um, you know, people people respond to the chat. If you if, you know if you call out people in the chat to see that question, you know, pin the question. I've seen that before. Uh, those things are, definitely do help that live stream experience. Yeah. Do Do you think? Services are going to change in the future in the next couple of years because of live streaming to, to kind of cater more so. towards that. I think they will. I think the flows of service and how they're done will change. I, I, I've watched some, uh, a, a buddy of mine, he, he's part of a, a pretty large church down in Alabama, and they do like an intro before service starts. So you have like a countdown and then they have two people sitting at a desk and they're like talking about, hey, this is what we got going on. And so they're doing their announcements different at the front of the service. Uh, and then they cut to the service. It's more timed where, hey, we're starting at this time because now it's also a production where mm -hmm. if we start, you know, we're supposed to start at 10 and we're starting at 10.02, that throws everything off as a, for the live stream because we're trying to get everything going. What do we do? Install for two minutes? Do we just put up a blank screen? You know, like we got to have something to do. Um, and then I think, and one of the challenges I still, I would love feedback in the comments for this is like for people that uh, do altar calls, you know, you know, 
that privacy part of that too. So we actually use an overlay where we have the audio come through. In some cases, we'll boot the audio, depends on what's being said. Uh, but having an overlay, because some people that don't want to be on camera, you know, you, you do want to protect their privacy as well. So I think those different elements of all kinds will affect the way we do live stream. But I think it will change. I, th I think church services will change because um, more people are watching online. They, they still want to, you know, receive a message, receive that information, be inspired. Um, and we, we have to, you know, continue to figure out and evolve. And, you know, you know, I, I was literally watching this one thing. I think it was on MSNBC, like it was an AI church service where they had a screen and they basically told the AI what to say, well, not to say, but the prompt for AI. And mm -hmm. the AI person delivered a service to people sitting in a physical room. It was the wildest thing. Oh, wow. um, it, and so things like that, you know, it's like, hey, whether either regardless if you believe that it's good or bad or evil or great, like things are changing. And so we just have to be, you know, paying attention to how we can, you know, make this still work for the ways that we need it to work. Right. Well, Joel, do you have any more questions? I feel like we've been, we've been throwing all the questions at, at Monte. So I, I want to open it, up the floor for him to th throw some at us. Um, no, I mean, I was, Oh, I wanted to get to his, uh, just the whole setup that he got there. So the, <laughs> the studio is your, are you, is it an in home studio yeah, that you have there? Sure. Yeah, so it's in a basement. I did have this over uh, in my in my house, and then I outgrew it. So um, I was actually going to rent out a studio space, and my wife was like, "Hey, your mom has an empty basement." I was like, "Yeah, she does, but I don't want to go over there every day, even though she's like twenty minutes away." So I ended up building it out in her basement, which is uh, empty. It's an unfinished basement, and so literally, um, I have three different sets here. So this is kind of the the set that I demo products and a lot. Then I have another one where I sit and then another one is kind of like a little testing areas. So, um, yeah, so this is the space, uh, definitely, uh, forethought how I wanted to kind of configure it, how I want to set things up because as you demo, I know you guys fully know this as you're demoing new equipment, you've got to create the whole scenario. So, you know, unplugging and replugging, how do I want to go about doing that? And so using matrix switchers are really nice. Um, using multiple PTZ cameras are really nice. I, I don't have them all connected in here, but I think there's like a total of 12 total <laughs> in some capacity somewhere. Uh, yeah, so. Um, and not going to miss like one shot. Also. Not going to miss any shots. Not going to miss any shots. Except for my overhead. I did take my overhead down here recently because I wanted to replace that one. Right. Um, I well, do well, notice... Uh, I do notice uh, an Adamo, BG Adamo box in the back. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> it's very very I'm, cool. I'm using the camera right now, um, and uh, yeah, I have the box here. I actually have the switcher box right there, so I, I'm actually using the switcher to um, awesome. record some updated videos on how to live stream for YouTube. And then my over the shoulder here um, is the BZB Gear 1080p, the NDI version. So that's my over the shoulder shot there. Um, oh, so yeah, I definitely incorporate my BZB gear technologies in here. This is, awesome. I, I, I use this a lot for when I do, uh, travel events, conferences and stuff. So, nice. um, this is, this is definitely my go-to for that. Yeah. Very portable right there. Um, yeah. I, I, we got to mention that, you know, it's, uh, it's, we're not being biased, but you know, your our favorite one, maybe the favorite, uh, video of, uh, of ours of, you know, from your channel. Um, it's actually titled BZB Gear BG Adamo 4K, best 4K PTZ camera I've used. And, and the um, reason now, I called it the best, type, the best 4K is because when I do Zoom conferences, people are like, what camera are you using? And I never had gotten that from other PTZ cameras that I use. I would get it when I use my mirrorless cameras all the time mm -hmm. because of the depth mm -hmm. of field, the mirrorless quality. But when I swapped it over to the 4K, they were like, what are you using? And I was like, oh, you guys can tell the difference because on my TV screen, I can't really tell it as, as much yeah. because it's just an oversized TV screen and it, uh -huh. it can't support 4K or anything like that. It's just an older TV. And so, um, yeah, that, and so it, it's definitely been the best PTZ camera that I, that I have. Man, that is very awesome. Cause you know, like we, me and Matt, we always joke that uh, I think uh, are we mentioning the uh, Adamo, the 
award-winning Adamo. Uh, or do we mention it too much? Uh, do we, are people getting sick about it? Um, I mean, we can't help it. Like, it's it's our flagship camera, and we're very proud of this camera. It's it's getting recognized everywhere. So yeah, it, it uh, feels we like every every day it's a new award. Like, <laughs> yeah. You're kind of talking. So, hey, we got another new award. So, yeah. <laughs> I know you guys are sick so about we, hearing about this camera. <laughs> yeah, we definitely love it, and the, our audience always hears from our mouth. You know why we love it, why it's so great. Uh, but you know, like, uh, uh, like reading rainbow guy, you know what he used to say, uh, don't take our word for it. So, um, we just like to kind of pick your brain and just, uh, I mean, you already uh, mentioned the, uh, the, the 4k resolution, but you know, personally, like why, uh, why do you like the, uh, uh using the Adamo 4k, uh, so much yourself? Yeah. I, I would say the other reason that I kind of took for granted because I hadn't really used it before were the tally lights so even though i'm a one person operation like if i use uh wirecast or obs and i switch cameras then i know which camera is live now i don't have like five of these but the one camera that i do have that has the tally lights is this adamo 4k so when i i actually had did a, a conference and i used it and the talent they were like oh i know which camera to look at and so mm -hmm. You know, it was very helpful to have that that little feature in there that sometimes we take for granted um, uh -huh. because I hadn't used it before. But now it's like, OK, it's one of the things where I definitely love the fact that I know which camera I'm actually using. And so for uh -huh. your talent, that's like looking all over the place or not sure where they're recording their podcast at, like yeah. they, they know which camera to look at. So. Yeah, no, awesome that you Especially yeah you bring you that up. I mean, right it's just the small things, yeah. right? I mean, it might seem small uh, when we were designing it. Uh, it, it was, uh, it, you know, not on the top priority. But then when we started getting into it, um, there's, there's stuff you have to think about, like how, how bright or how, uh, you know, how large the location of it. Uh, you don't want that light just in the front because, I mean, if it's going to be moving around or if you, you, you install it upside down or whatnot, uh, Mm -hmm. You know, you need to, that's why we kind of, we had to design the light where it was, wasn't too obtrusive. Uh, but then, you know, it, you could see it from any, uh, from all directions, all sides of the camera. So th that's why our yeah. light kind of, kind of runs through the side, goes around. Um, but yeah, like little things like that. I mean, uh, like our, our design team, they did a, a wonderful job um, on, on just thinking of, uh, and then getting feedback too. Like there were uh, some some things on the camera that we got feedback from either clients or customers. Uh, so, um, and then just to kind of improve it from, from those, uh, that feedback. So, I mean, uh, all, all of this feedback, it, it's, uh, it's always, uh, you know, good, uh, good to hear. Yeah. All right. Well, I think at this point, Monte, if you have any questions for us, you know, we would love to uh, answer them. Yeah, uh, BCB gear. Like I wasn't familiar with it until I was watching. I think one video was about the. It was a distance test video. Um, mm. uh, so if you guys remember that was distance test video. So like, what's the origin story of BCB gear, and uh, you know, what's like, I guess, the mission statement, if you will. I'm gonna throw yeah, that to I Joel because he's been here longer, and he he was kind of here for the the whole uh yeah <laughs> conceiving of bzb gear from bzb express um yeah i mean we we do get a lot uh, of that especially when we started doing uh trade shows uh two years ago um you know a lot of it was like who's bzb gear we haven't heard you and um i mean it, it's it feels good now that when we go to the the, the recent ones now you know it's not like who are you it's kind of like oh like we've seen you on uh youtube or, or we've seen you at the last show uh like we want to know what's new now so it's uh, kind of it's a good feeling that uh, that we you know at least uh, like our, we're getting out there, but uh, we yeah we are a fairly uh, new uh, manufacturer brand uh, I think 2019 uh, we first arose but uh, we've really been in the industry since uh, 2005 uh, you know we started off as uh, like third party uh, distributors um, so we've worked with clients and customers and uh, integrators installers. Um, you know, the whole troubleshooting and what uh, what works, what doesn't work, what 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 people like, what they don't like. Uh, uh, so, yeah, basically we, we got uh, we we were really uh, like prepped and ready to to make the transition to to becoming uh, manufacturers. Um, and um, it, it kind of it really uh, it, it kind of pushed us uh, during like lockdown and covid uh, when everything just kind of shut down. Right. 
Um, but then, you know, like you said, with PTZ cameras booming during that time, uh, we started getting into PTZ cameras and um, it, yeah, it just really took off. Um, and then from there, we just uh, are forging forward with, uh, you know, not, not just PTZ cameras. I would, we started off uh, as uh, like mainly pro AV. So, I mean, we still have the pro AV side of the company, but incorporating more broadcasting. So uh, essentially like a whole, like we just want to be able to, to bring uh, both worlds, uh, pro AV broadcasting your whole like system under, you know, uh, all tech support. Uh, I, we know that it can be a headache just to contact tech support if you have uh, three, four different uh, brand, you know, brands in your whole, uh, your equipment, you got to call each tech support. That could be a headache and an adventure. So um, yeah, just trying to, and then, I mean, the, the beauty with our products is it's it's all compat uh, compatible with, with other brands. Like you don't have to have mm -hmm. uh, a, a BZB gear camera and controller and video production switcher. Um, although that would be the best uh, case scenario, um, <laughs> you, you know, it, 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 it mixes with all of the brands. So, um, but yeah, just to, uh, like our, that's basically our mission, just to try to consolidate and make everything easier for, for the customers, um, whether it's, you know, tech support or the buying process, uh, whatever it is, um, we're always there. Um, and, you know, lifetime, we, we have a great warranty, uh, three year on everything, five year uh, on our cameras. Um, and then the support seven day, uh, we, we're proud of our seven day week, uh, you know, US based support, uh, always there, you know, if something goes uh, wrong in the field or whatever, uh, you, you know, count on BZB gear to, to be able to, to walk you through uh, all those issues. So, um, yeah, so we may be new, but we're like old new guys um, <laughs> in the industry. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love the support aspect of it. I think sometimes people undervalue, you know, being able to yeah. have a technical issue and being able to figure out what's going on. And there's actually support because there's a lot of there's a lot of products on the market that will then you'll just buy the product, but there is no support behind it. So if you don't know how to go in and configure it, there, there's been times where I've been sent PTZ cameras and I'm like, OK, what is the IP address of the camera so I can even log into it or like even try to figure out what it is because the instruction manual isn't <laughs> written to call, you yeah. know, written to yeah. par where it's even, you know, something I can even figure. If I can't figure out, I know <laughs> that other people can't figure this out. So yeah. having yeah. a customer support is definitely one of those things that I value when I'm buying products. And, you know, you know, I, I do like whenever I can is sticking with the same brand of products because it just makes stuff so easy when you're working with it. So you, you see all the Sony stuff. So I'm a Sony guy. You won't find me getting Canon. You won't find me getting Nikon oh. stuff. Like uh -huh. I just know Sony's infrastructure. I know how things work. I know where the buttons are. I know where the layouts are. And so it's one of those yeah. things where, okay, it just makes it easy if you're working with the brand. So like when I do take the Adama 4K out, I take the BZB, I take these two out together for a reason or, the three out for a reason because it's all the same brand so it's like it's so much easier for it to play but like you said you know if, if i do want to use another controller it does work with another controller but if i can i like to just kind of stay all within one brand so i just kind of know like if i do have an issue hey it's something here and i don't know what it is but the people that do probably know what the issue is like they can so much easier help me than you know oh what other piece of adapter <laughs> do you have in your workflow that's probably messing this up and it's not our equipment it's that you know old adapter that you refuse to take out <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's great that you, you you mentioned like the whole support because I mean we get we'll get that question like at trade shows as well. Like uh, your products, they look similar to uh, something we saw online, eBay or Amazon. Um, we could get it so much cheaper. Like uh, like why won't we just do that? And um, I mean, there's no issue you know you know with that. I mean, everyone has different budgets, but you know, like you said, support. I mean, and and just because our stuff is uh, the similar on the outside uh, camera, whether it's cameras or, uh, you know, matrix switches, whatever it is, um, the inside, it's always, uh, it's always different. Like it, it, we may use the same shell on some of the, uh, you know, say our cameras, but the, the, the lens, uh, you know, we the lens will be different, the chipset, the software. Um, yeah. So, and, and then also with the, well, that was more specifically support. kind of our, our earlier stuff, like the, uh, the UPTZ back there, um, the, mm -hmm. the UPTZ has more of a similar body that you might see on, on some of the other cameras out there on the market, but we definitely worked to change some of the hardware that's actually inside of it, get different lenses, mm -hmm. get different uh, chipsets and add more features. And uh, 
sorry, sorry to cut you off there, Joel, but I, I know you'd mentioned the, um, the, the mission statement, right? So, you know, we want to provide top grade AV and broadcasting solutions, but we also want to give precedence to our design, our user experience and our, the lifetime product support. So I, I know that's been a big focus for us this year is um, bringing our user experience to the next level. So I, I've been working on a couple things, just giving feedback and whatnot of, hey, our camera app works and it, it's pretty decent, but what can we do to get better? What what features are we missing? How can we make it a little bit easier to um, for, for the end user, uh, for somebody who's in a house of worship who might be using the app because it's, it's convenient or it's just what they can afford, just stuff like that. So... Uh, mm -hmm. Take, take it away, Joel. Sorry. <laughs> no, I just I was just gonna clo close that point with uh, if you I mean you you could buy you know cheaper things online, but uh, like the support, right? Like it's it's understated. It's kind of like a under uh, forgotten thing. But uh, yeah, I mean, good luck getting you know support if you need it with with the, with the uh, other type of um, uh, solutions out there. So yeah, we just uh, we're really proud of our uh, tech support team. I mean, Nate. Uh, Nathan and Trayvon, they uh, they've been they work hard all the time. Uh, uh, Nathan's actually on our a lot of our um, uh, videos, so he he gets uh, so a lot of the content is from like we'll ask him, you know, what what are people having trouble uh, uh, trouble with, you know, what are they having difficulty setting up, or what are their questions, uh, and then we'll kind of some of our episodes we'll we'll base it around his experience from what he hear, he hears. So uh, yeah, uh, they they do a wonderful job over there. I commend those guys. Um, Which I know they've said that's been really helpful because when they have those problems pop up again, they're like, "Hey, that's awesome! We've actually already addressed it step by step. I'll walk yeah. you through it. Just check out this link, and and there's the video." Oh yeah, sometimes yeah, sometimes we even just send uh, customers uh, the link. You know, hey, check this out uh, first. If you still are unclear or you have questions afterwards, you know, we're happy to help you. And um, yeah, so. Uh, you know, a lot of times the video does it, uh, does it, does it uh, already and answers their questions. So, um, yeah. yeah, production team, Mr. Director here, and uh, the talent in front of the camera, uh, they do uh, uh, impeccable jobs. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's the best place, you know, I know when I get stuck in, like, what do I make a video about? It's just going to the questions, you know, in the co comment section. Oh. What are people asking? Okay, let me yeah. make a video on this and answer the question because I'm sure yeah. they're not the only person. And if you do see multiple questions coming in, you know, oh. like, yeah, we, we really need to make a video for this. And so that's that's kind of how I approach the content piece, too, is, you know, okay, you, you 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 don't understand that you can do four cameras and N NDI is going to be another word that I'm going to do here soon too because um it it it's wireless it's it, oh, hey I want less wires and I can just put it on my network so that's going to be you know one of the ones I do is like okay how do you use these cameras over NDI and you know nice little thumbnail with no cables no wires it's just you know outside of your network cable but um. Mm -hmm. You know, those those are things that people are asking me for is like, how do I actually use NDI and make this easy because networking is too complicated. So, you know, just trying to, you know, make it very easy for them to understand it. So when they have a question, just like, hey, just go watch the video and yeah. uh, get the views yeah. up for me. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> <And> subscribe. <laughs> uh -huh. um, I know you have uh, like a whole bunch of content on, on your on your channel and, and uh, you know, you're you're more of a like a tech, just overall tech. You love tech. Uh, all types of tech, uh, but would you like how um, the majority of your channel is it uh, how you know house of worship uh, related and how how to you know live stream and the tech to use and and tips for that uh, industry or that uh, yeah. market? Yeah, I'll I say that I kind of tailor it toward the houses of worship for the examples that I use. Um, I do like you know sports live streaming too, so I try to tailor that something. into it yeah oh. so um i kind of every once in a while i might do a conference one but it's if i have to figure out okay how do i answer this question i'll typically go to the house of worship because that that was the biggest number of the subscribers to my channel when oh. i posted my channel in 2020 i want to say almost 20,000 people subscribe oh. to that video based off of that yeah. video so the oh, wow. audience is kind of already established there even though i yeah. do want to talk about like other scenarios for live streaming but so that's why i do tailor it there and plus i'm you know i'm at my church almost 
two, sometimes three times a week. So I'm yeah. always touching it. I know what they're running into in the different scenarios. So creating content is a little bit easier because, you know, I'm in that same frame of mind of, you know, I know this will work, you know, for you or, you know, here's some things to consider. Yeah, no, that made that total sense right there. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, you have a bunch of great content. Uh, we're always going to your your channel to learn things ourselves, you know. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, great stuff. Well, here, here's a quick question for you. You mentioned you're a Miami Dolphins fan, and you said there was a, a funny story about that. So, uh, yeah. What's what's the backstory around here? Uh, so, so the backstory. So I live in Virginia, right? And so in Virginia, the closest team is the Washington Commanders now. Yep. Um, but I was never a Commanders fan growing up. So uh, at the time, yeah, because I'm a little bit older too. So at the time, there were no Carolina Panthers. There were oh, no, no Jacksonville. Jackson jaguars and so on abc cbs nbc we always had cbs um and cbs would always play the miami dolphins and pittsburgh Steelers games and so i just gravitated to dan marino it was miami they Uh they were winning not winning super bowls or championships but it was miami was on all the time so they had three teams essentially to choose from (laughs) Commanders, Steelers, or Dolphins, and I just gravitated toward Miami because I was just the biggest Dan Marino fan. Zach Thomas, Jason Taylor, those are my guys. Yeah, yeah, no, they, uh, yeah, yeah, I think Dan Marino, yeah, the probably the greatest QB to never win, uh, to never win a Super Bowl. Um, but yeah, no, you you mentioned CBS, yeah, CBS. I think they because they have contract with a- AFC teams, yep. uh, so yeah, that's why you saw always saw the Steelers or uh, or the Dolphins. Um, and then I was talking to you uh, off air on this. Yeah, I, I, now I know the answer. I wanted to see wh- how you became a, a Dolphins fan in, in Virginia because uh, my oldest son, he's, uh, he's a Dolphins fan also. Uh, he likes the Niners too, but he, he's uh, like he, his cousin, I guess uh, the story is his cousin gave him a uh, Reggie Bush uh, jersey uh, when Bush was on, uh, on the Dolphins. And um, I guess, I mean, that's how I was as a kid too. Somebody gave me a gift or I like the team <laughs> colors. Um, you know, then I kind of gravitated towards that team. It wasn't so much, you know, where I'm from. Uh, I didn't care what team, what the local team was, but if this team had a cooler mascot or a a nice looking Jersey, I'd gravitate towards that team. So that's his story. He's like, I always give him uh, hell for it. I mean, like, I I mean, the Dolphins, they started, uh, when he started becoming a fan, they were kind of getting hot and good already. Uh, Cause you know, Dolphins were kind of a joke until, uh, you know, recent, like two, three years ago. Um, when they started, uh, uh, you know, you know, uh, 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 getting their stuff together, so uh, he kind of became a fan at the right time because they're they're kind of winning games too. So, uh, but you know, I always uh, have fun with them at home. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, Matt, can I ask a question? Yes, absolutely. What, what what's your team, Matt? I'm a Patriots fan. Yeah, what is your <laughs> team, Matt? A, a Patriots fan from California. How does that? <laughs> Is that because Brady? Well, Brady was actually from the no, Bay Area. No, I mean, it, it's honestly, it, it's pretty simple. My dad's a Cowboys fan. I wasn't going to be a Cowboys fan. <laughs> I, I didn't really care for the Niners at the time. Um, and I, I don't know. I When I was a kid, man, I was just obsessed with kind of like the whole patriotism. Like, um, like. I, I I was always thought that the independence thing was really cool, so I, it just I, I gravitated towards that because the, the the mascot of the name. So and they were winning. They, they were winning. That, I, I'm sure that helped. I am sure that definitely helped. They're not winning now, but I'm still a fan. Unfortunately, yeah. So, uh, like, like I said, we'll see what happens this next year. I'm hoping the the new coaching staff will. Um, Wait, did they life? get a new? Did they hire a new coach yet, or are they still in yeah, that process? Did. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mayo. Oh, Mayo! Oh, the mm-hmm. lineman. That's right. So in house, it was pretty quick after uh, Belichick left. It was like within the within the. Well, week. yeah, I mean, because I heard a story yeah. that they kind of were eyeing him as well as a successor, and they they they're real uh, fond of him. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. ex player there, right? And uh, yeah. he's still coaching in the Patriots, right? I think he was a. Uh, yeah, yeah, he, he was coaching. Uh, okay, so, um, right. it, it's going to be interesting to see what happens because I know how the the Patriots organization organization worked at the time. 
Belichick was more than just a coach. He was, he was almost more like a GM. He handled a lot of yeah. that stuff behind the scenes. He had so a lot of power. Yeah. It, it's going to, it's going to be interesting. I think there's going to be a lot of learning curve. Um, I don't know how they're going to handle it with Mayo. If Mayo is going to kind of step into that more, like I'm a, a coach and a GM role, or if they, they're kind of going to separate it or, or what. So we'll see. Uh, I'm hoping for the best, but you guys, uh, I mean, you guys do have, uh, we are talking about earlier, you guys do have the third overall pick. So, I mean, you, you guys could either trade down and get more picks to, to, to rebuild or uh, try to shoot for that uh, new QB if you guys don't think uh, Mac Jones is, is, is the guy. I, what do you I think of Mac Jones? Do you like Mac Jones? I, 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 not, I think, not really. I think y'all <laughs> should just take a few years off, probably about 20, and let some other <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, you guys, <laughs> you guys, you guys own I, like the two thousands, man. Like, uh, uh, no more, no more. No, no actually, more. yeah, it was the two thousands, and I think it was like ten years later. Brady took a kind of like Jordan, right? Took a little break, and then, and then, pff, then he started winning, and he won like two of three or whatever it is. And um, yeah, Brady's just uh, Brady's just different, man. Look at the the year he left. He he left to go Tampa Bay. Uh, and and then what happens? He he freaking he wins a, another Super Bowl uh, right after that. So I mean, uh, he even got Gronk to come out of the retirement. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it's crazy, man. It, uh, but the uh, the Dolphins though, I like uh. So the uh, oh, I heard um, Xavier Howard. Xavier Howard, he's like the top yeah. corner, but they're gonna Xavier let him Howard. go. I thought him yeah. and um, Jalen Ramsey, man, that was like. The top two, that's a duo right there. But, I mean, Ramsey was hurt. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a shame. I wanted to see how that, that full potential, you know, that, that defense uh, could have been. Uh, but, you know, I, now I heard they're, they're, gonna, they're not going to re-sign Howard. Uh, Ramsey still be there, so hopefully he'll get fully healthy for next year. But, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. We, we have to wait months and months and months. But we do have that new football league. Uh, oh, XFL? Yeah, the XFL, USFL combined league. Oh, so that's right. Yeah, I did watch that a little bit last year because we have the DC Defenders, and they I think they got to the championship game. They lost the championship game, so we actually have oh. a decent team to root for over here. Which we have no decent teams right here locally, other than them to root <laughs> for. So, uh, uh, well, I we mean, can't... the commander. Oh, so you're you're saying uh, the command? Well, you're never a Redskins fan, but uh, you guys have the the number two overall pick. So yeah, Matt over there, he got number them. three. I, I, I don't know about them. They're the, oh, they're, they, <laughs> yeah. they play in Landover, Maryland. They have a training facility that they practice at in uh, Ashburn, Virginia. They're called Washington, and this, this city is trying to figure out what to do with RFK. So we still have the old RFK that's just sitting there. Um, and they're oh. actually – having a lot of conversations here more recently to figure out what they're going to do there. That, the that organization has yeah, it, it's, blown it's, my mind in the last couple uh, of years of how they've handled well, it. Well, you said, man, yeah, I mean, yeah, in the news, like Dan Snyder, right? I mean, you hear like all that crazy stuff. So, I mean, uh, he's yeah, out it, now. So, it, I mean, it was a bad experience going to the games. I will say it, it, it's, you know, even, you know, just, a, you know, as a fan of football, I would go when the Dolphins came and, um, the stadium is just, I mean, everything is overpriced. It's, I mean, it's the DMV area, so you kind of accept mm -hmm. that to a degree. But, like, it, it just seemed over, overpriced for just parking and, you know, just, you know, food. And it, the seats are like, you know, cause I know you guys probably saw some of the videos of the leaky roofs and um, just came out news that FedEx is taking away the naming rights. They don't want to oh, be associated. Their, their yeah, they're leaving like two oh, years wow, early. No, I didn't the naming rights for the, it's you know it the the stadium is in an odd location like to get to. It's not the best for commuters if you want to take the, the the metro system to get there. It's a significant walk just to get to the stadium. So it there hopefully the new ownership like kind of changes some things and the, the yeah. buzz has come back in the city. Uh, mm -hmm. for the team which is a good thing so um you know and it, it, they got to win games so once they can start winning you know more yeah. people will come they actually showed a picture of i believe it was 2023 or 2022's training camp 
and how very few people came out to training camp. And training camp is free. Bring out your family. Bring yeah. out the kids. You can see the players. There was like yeah. nobody there day one. This past year, it was packed because of the uh, new ownerships. And so, um, hopefully, you know, you know, they uh, they get it right. You know, we got Magic Johnson, and it seems like everything he touches oh, turns to gold anyway. So um, that's right. He's part of that. Ownership I think um, um, Bob Myers. That's right. Bob yeah, Myers, Bob. he's the uh, the GM of the Warriors, uh, but now he is the GM, uh, the same position, I guess, uh, for the uh, Washington Commanders. Yeah, so, so they've um, got some new people in place, so that's nice. Yeah, that is very good. I mean, I'm not, I don't wanna, I'm not going to get political here or too political on any of that stuff, but, uh, you know, with the name change, right? The, I think they should have kept with the Washington Redskins. Um, because they actually did a survey, right? So they did a survey. They asked actual Native Americans, do you find it derogatory or do you, what do you feel, feel about this name? And the, 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 the name Redskins is not meant to be a derogatory term. So a majority, almost all that got, that, that got surveyed said they, they prefer the name Redskins. They have nothing wrong with it. They prefer it because... It, it brings attention and, and homage to to uh, to the Native Americans, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, look at all these sports. They're you know the Cleveland Indians, you know they're Cleveland uh, Guardians now. Uh, the Redskins are gone. So it's yeah, I don't know. Like uh, I, the, the at least the Native Americans, they feel that it, they they wanted to keep those names to kind of to to you know pay respects to their heritage and things like that. So um, yeah, I. I thought the Redskins were, uh, they had a cool logo. You know, the Indians had a cool logo too, the happy face guy. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I think the, the worst part about that whole thing is, you know, they had like, what was it, a year, a year to come up with a, a new name, I think is what, they, yeah. what it was. Yeah. And then they came up with the commanders. Yeah. It, it, it just didn't, it didn't feel like a, a good, a good name. Well, it was actually, so that first year that they, they got rid of the name Redskins, they were uh, that first the Washington season. Football they were, football they were, team. Yeah. The Washington yeah. football team. And that one, uh, I, I don't know. I kind of, I would have taken that over the commanders. At first it sounded dumb. Yeah. At first it sounded dumb, but it, it, I don't know. I actually kind of, it grew on me. So I kind of like that a, l a little better than commanders. <laughs> Yeah, well, we we had all the WTFs um, <laughs> saying oh. for more ways than one when that happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like to, to your point, Joel, I, I I kind of agree, but the, like there there's a lot of really cool uh, other names they could have used if they wanted to um, keep the legacy, but also uh, pay more homage. Like uh, the the Code Talkers, for example. Uh, really really famous like native american um unit in the in the military um hmm. just, just a lot of a lot of things like that where, where they could have yeah. kind of had the same homage but you yeah. know uh, yeah. I, I just thought it, you had a year to come up with something better than the commanders please <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and plus right, we have gentlemen. a lot a lot here in dc too so they got a lot of things to choose from yeah well <laughs> gentlemen uh we are coming up on almost an hour and a half and uh oh, so fast uh, yeah it, it's been a really good live stream but i think that's a, a good point to kind of cut it off a little bit for today monte we really appreciate you coming on uh it was great to pick your brain and, and kind of talk to you about the, the pro av world and a little bit about sports too you know yeah. kind of chop it up a little bit on on some uh not on topic stuff but that that's exactly what uh what makes us human right that's what people people like yeah seeing, so. Yeah, I appreciate uh, you guys for having me. You guys are awesome um, and definitely love, you know, kind of knowing you guys. You know, that's it's pretty cool when, you know, it, it was a couple years ago. I would just use the equipment. But now it's like, oh, I actually know the people behind the equipment where I can send that question. I can say, hey, can you check this out? So it's, it's been a privilege to kind of hang out with you guys for the last hour plus here. Yeah, yeah, I mean, same, uh, same here. I mean, we, we see your channel, and it's kind of like uh, we've seen them on TV, but I haven't. This is my first time, actually. Uh, you've worked with uh, a few of my colleagues, met them at shows, but this is the first time that I've spoken with you face to face. So it's uh, kind of like a uh, starch stuck. I, I, you know, I see this guy on TV all the time. And, <laughs> but um, no, if you if you don't mind, uh, just telling our audience uh, where can they find more information about you or your um, your your social platforms uh, that you want to yeah. highlight. 
Yeah, cool. Appreciate it. Yeah, so YouTube obviously is the number one place I will show up. Tutorial videos. I like to hang out on this platform called Amazon. They allow for live shopping, so I like to demonstrate things live on Amazon. So it makes it really easy if somebody wants to actually purchase what I'm using. It's like there's a carousel, and you just click on it. And you can just add it to cart. So that's pretty cool. So I've been live streaming on Amazon since 2020, and then I've been actually posting posting more content on LinkedIn. So um, you guys follow me on LinkedIn over there. Try to post clips and some videos and go live over there on that platform too. So I'm a solo creator. So I try to do as many things as I can by myself. So without like going too wide and uh, maximizing everything, but those three platforms are kind of where I like to hang out. Awesome. Awesome. Joel, got anything else? Uh, no, that's it. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, thank you, Monte, for your time uh, joining us. Um, the point man, that's our point guard right there, Teo. Um, but uh, I just remember check out Monte Monte's uh, T, uh, YouTube, YouTube and LinkedIn. Uh, check us out BZB TV on YouTube, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn as well. Um, but yeah, that is it. Uh, very nice show today. I learned a lot of stuff. Uh, got to pick uh, Monte's brain. Hopefully, we could get him uh, on a future episode again. Uh, maybe a uh, different the uh, there's different themes or whatnot, but uh, yeah, we love working with you, Monte, and uh, keep up the good work. Absolutely. Appreciate for those of you guys at home, thank you guys for tuning in. We appreciate you uh, sticking it out for uh, an hour and a half. I think this is the longest uh, episode that we've actually had, Joel. Oh, um, I think it is. But, uh, for those of you at home, hey, once every four years, been... right? Yeah, once every, every four, four years. years. So, I mean, this, this <laughs> we, we made an episode. extra long episode for an extra long February. There, there we <laughs> yeah. go. But uh, for those of you guys at home, hope you guys have a great weekend. And we will see you guys in the next live stream.